Another chapter in the television story of Sheboygan, a city of homes and families, a combination of nature's endowments of weather, soil, and water with American enterprise to make Sheboygan one of the richest, most self-sufficient cities in Wisconsin. Without that happy combination, there could be no homes, no jobs, no wealth to provide for the good living in Sheboygan. There could not be an adequate municipal system, cultural development, nor recreational advantages which are the rewards of vision and industry. Originally agricultural in its beginnings, Sheboygan is today basically industrial, and it makes no apologies for it. Rather, it is proud of its industry, and recognizes that its well-being is the product of this American system of enterprise and production. Sheboygan encourages its industry, and working through its new industries committee of the Association of Commerce, tries to attract even more wealth-producing industry to the community. One of the first questions asked by a potential new industry is, does Sheboygan have adequate power facilities to accommodate our needs? This is the answer. The constantly expanding output of the Wisconsin Power and Light Company, presently supplying 300,000 kilowatts of power. Long before the turn of the century, this mark represented fine cabinetry and furniture produced by the then Northern Furniture Company. In time, people who bought this furniture for their homes came to know the trade name better than the company name. So several years ago, the corporate name was chained respected name for an established pioneer company in Sheboygan. Today, families can browse through individual room settings at Arway, inspecting furniture of a quality seldom matched. In these company-owned showrooms, they become convinced that Arway furniture offers style, quality, and value far in excess of the price. Modern and period designs in bedroom and dining room furniture are the quality products of our way. Fine furniture, as everyone knows, comes from fine lumber combined with craftsmanship. Every day, the record will show a shipment of lumber about to arrive at the our way plant. It comes in carload lots, delivered directly inside our way's building number 12, especially built to provide not only storage, but adequately ventilated by open louvers to properly air dry the lumber. The cargo may be mahogany from faraway Ceylon, satinwood from the West Indies, or North American hardwood such as oak, walnut, birch, and maple. After conditioning by initial air drying in the storage building, the lumber is treated in dry kilns, which further reduce the moisture content to approximately 5%, the ideal specification for the manufacture of quality furniture. After drying the planks, they are plain so that any lumber defects can be spotted and removed in the initial ripping and cutting operation. The sawing operations are mechanized, of course, with safeguards to protect the operators. The wood sizes are shaped and reduced for convenient handling in other processes, such as gluing, veneering, carving, to be used as core stock or bases for veneer finishes. Veneer finishes are made from thin laminations of wood and glue with a choice wood exterior chosen for its beauty of grain design. And veneers can be molded into desired shapes, as well as permanently bonded by Arway's high-frequency veneer press. High-frequency electrical currents are passed from the press's anodes through the glue lines throughout the panel, which forms a tight and lasting bond in just a matter of seconds. A beautifully grained veneer, in this case gracefully curved, is produced and ready for application. Core stock is also bonded into strong and durable panels by means of the glue and high frequency process. One man operates this machine. He feeds it properly cut lumber sizes. The return belt carries panels which have been automatically assembled, glued, and high frequency bonded, all in seconds. The shaping of such things as tabletops is also done automatically, with the cutting wheel guided by a master form which prescribes the contour. Another combination of a master craftsman and modern methods of production. This automatic carving machine can accurately reproduce 24 units, such as table or chair legs, simultaneously. This device senses the original hand-carved design and transmits the carving instruments to each unit. Where volume must be handled, most of the R-Way operation is efficiently accomplished by automatic devices 
whether it be carving, gluing, sizing, or sanding. Although a furniture manufacturing plant deals primarily in wood, there is still much metal work to be done, such as the fashioning of drawer guides, or as in this case, the making of a steel chassis around which a cabinet assembly, for instance, is built. This provides added strength, or what we call skyscraper construction. This bedroom dresser has an interior skeleton of steel, completely enclosed by the wood framework. Final basic assembly of this combination of wood and steel is accomplished by placing the entire unit in a hydraulic press, assuring a tight bond and precise fit within close tolerances. With all the advantages of automatic machinery, the skilled and practiced eye of the master cabinet maker will always be essential in the manufacture of fine furniture. This is particularly true in securing the exact fit of doors and drawers. The same is true in the final finishing of fine wood products. To bring out the beauty of the grain, to produce the smooth finished luster of warm wood, the care and skill of the individual craftsman working by hand will always be required. On this conveyor line, winding for over half a mile through the huge plant, customers' orders are grouped and given their final finishing and rubbing before delivery. Then each group is thoroughly examined and inspected, checked for color, finish, and quality. Here, the interests of the consumer are protected as well as the hallmark of fine furniture, the R-Way brand. All of the care and craftsmanship that has gone into the making of this quality product must be protected during the delivery of the furniture to a customer's home. Each item is carefully wrapped with a protective padding and carefully packed in giant R-Way truck trailers. Upon delivery, experienced furniture handlers set up the furniture in the customer's home who is assured of receiving furniture in perfect factory inspected condition. A fleet of 14 of these truck trailers is used to keep up with the demand for R-Way deliveries. From this huge plant sprawling over 25 acres of riverfront in Sheboygan has come an endless stream of the cabinet maker's art for over three generations. From a modest beginning in 1881, the plant has grown to its present stature to take its place among the nation's leaders in the manufacture of fine furniture. For nearly 30 years, the Paper Box and Specialty Company has manufactured set-up and folding boxes tailor-made to the customer's specifications. Modern packaging, transportation, and display techniques require versatility, durability, appearance, and inexpensive containers. These are just a few of the many varieties of folding and set-up boxes that Paper Box and Specialty Company manufacture in huge quantities for their customers across the nation. Officers and supervisors of the company are constantly conferring and checking on means to improve the product. Jan and John Vanderpie, vice president and president respectively, are working out production details with Jerry and Abe Vanderpie, press room foreman and set up department head, and Lester Holtz, the folding department head. All production runs for folding cartons originate in the layout department where artists design samples of boxes which will give the customer an idea of how his finished order will look. The sample is rigidly tested for durability, eye appeal, and the proper size to obtain the best possible box for the item it is designed for. One of Paper Box and Specialty Company's mottos is, if you have a box problem, we have the answer. Answer to the problem begins here. Beginning operation after the design is set and the die is mounted, is the scoring of the blank paperboard sheets. In this sequence, the blanks are cut and scored to the required size and shape for a particular customer setup box specification. Then the excess corner material is cut away before being placed in the quad stair. Here, the blanks are automatically applied with gum paper to the four sides, which forms the box into the required dimensions. This is followed by a wrapping operation in which a covering paper is applied to the box blank. This gives the color and design required by the customer. This machine, the Model H wrapper, is considered the most modern of its kind in the paper box industry.
The desired design and color of the paperboard sheets are applied in much the same manner as a flatbed printing press, except that the printing in this case can range from a simple one color job to a faithful reproduction of fine process work. This may involve up to four or five colors. The machine used for this specialized work by the paper box and specialty company is the meal printing press. Following this operation will come the cutting and creasing process using either the Babcock or the Platten method. Basically, each cuts and creases the sheets into the desired shape and size of the box, although their construction and operating principles are different. The Babcock printer is used for both large quantities of paperboard as well as for large sizes. The Platten is used for smaller lots as well as smaller sheets. Many customers desire a special display carton that contains a transparent window so that the buyer can see the merchandise. For these boxes, dies crease the window area so they can be knocked out easily. They are then fed into a window machine which automatically applies a transparent window. Recent addition to the company's equipment is a new window machine that can enlarge the type of boxes that can be produced. Now this design you may recognize as the original design being made at the beginning of this film. There are many other modern, completely automatic devices which speed the production of folding and setup boxes, such as the Stav Master Gluer, which completes the construction of a folding box that requires no setting up. It sets up automatically when filled with the customer's item. And so, another day's production of scores of types of paper boxes are ready to be shipped to paper box and specialty company customers in the Midwestern area of the United States. The company's location at 1505 Sibley Court in Sheboygan has 50,000 square feet of floor space, all of fireproof construction, devoted to the manufacture of these specialized containers. The plant's huge daily output is moved either by railroad, there is a Chicago and Northwestern Railway siding serving the factory, or by truck from the loading docks. This is a familiar sight in Sheboygan and on the highways leading out of the city. Another cargo, paper box and specialty companies' products. Diversified and specialized boxes and containers. They protect, contain, and display the merchandise of a thousand varieties, from silk stockings to stakes, from toys to tablecloths. Another Sheboygan industry which makes our city great. These are the people of Sheboygan. You, your friends, your neighbors. They are producers, builders, and consumers. They are Sheboygan. Because of them, there is growth and development of the community, the dream of every city. But such development cannot happen on its own. Added to the ingredients of productive work and potential markets is another essential commodity, that of credit, a source of money. There must be a service for the transferring of funds, for their safekeeping, and for financial information and guidance. In Sheboygan and its surrounding trade area, banking has played its part in this development. Take the case of the Citizen State Bank and the Bank of Sheboygan, who have combined their resources and know-how into one bank, the Citizens Bank of Sheboygan. The decision of these men to join forces is in itself a testimony to the fact that far-sighted businessmen shape the destiny of Sheboygan. The result has been to increase the supply of credit and money in the area, to create more modern facilities, which can provide every banking service. The vision of these local bankers and their decision to merge has spearheaded other developments in the community which industry and business have followed. One example, these homes, and the dream of every family to own their own. 80% of the homes in Sheboygan are owner-occupied. And with the Citizens Bank increased capital structure and new deposits, the financing of home loans has been greatly increased. This new source of credit also applies to the man who needs a new car. The Citizens Bank of Sheboygan can finance it more easily. The same facility has also been extended to provide credit to those who operate fleets of automobiles, the trucker, or the man who uses heavy equipment in his work. So whether it be the family car for transportation and pleasure, or prime movers for industry, their purchase can be made possible by banking credit.
Many of these same advantages hold true for business and industry in Sheboygan. The new bank's increased loan limits will make it possible to serve the needs of more business to an even greater degree. And with this increased lending potential comes a sharpening of business perceptiveness. Additional trained commercial officers with more time for individual services ensure closer bank customer contact. Advantages to the businessman results in advantage for the consumer as large inventories thus made possible mean greater selection and choice for the customer, better services, and lower prices. Many people are unaware of the close ties a bank has with the life of the community, whether it be recreational, social, industrial, or religious. Civic improvements, such as these parks, are made possible by bank-financed bond issues. City and county funds are entrusted to the bank for safekeeping. Counsel and advice on the use of public funds are often centered in the local bank, which has its citizens' confidence. Congregations seeking funds for church construction or improvement turn to their community bank for help and advice. And just as important in the bank's estimation is the family account, maintained for keeping the family finances on a business-like basis. Whatever the ambitions of the community, the Citizens Bank of Sheboygan pledges its support for any move to improve the community. A free and unfettered press is an essential ingredient in a democratic society or in any type of government where freedom of expression and of information can help safeguard the rights of man. And so it is in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, where the Sheboygan Press, the city's only newspaper, has flourished for over half a century. From editorial conferences such as these held every day come the long-range planning of the newspaper's policy, its attitude toward public affairs, both locally and nationally, and most important, how can today's edition best inform the reader of events and issues of the day? Any newspaper depends to a great extent on the telephone as the vital link between it and the community. The assignment editor has just learned of an event that has occurred, and here begins the saga of newspaperdom, the story that has begun in the mind of man. It must be conveyed to the minds of many men, the readers, through the means of metal, ink, and paper. Notified of his assignment and briefed on the initial details, the staff reporter is sent to get the facts firsthand. He confers with the policeman at the scene of the event, in this case, an accident. He checks with other eyewitnesses, makes his own observations. Time permitting, he returns to his office and assembles the facts into an orderly, concise, and accurate account of the occurrence. His story is then checked by the associate editor, which checks it for possible inaccuracies, clarity, length, writes a headline for it, and sends the copy down a chute to the first floor composing room. The story at this point has moved from the mind of the reporter to paper. Now, it is about to be translated into metal by the linotype operator who sets the copy into lines of metal type. Eight such machines are used at the Sheboygan Press, each setting approximately one column of type per hour. The columns are placed in galleys and the paper proof is pulled from the ink type. This proof is read or checked for possible typographical errors. Any mistakes are corrected by the linotyper and new slugs are inserted in the galley by the compositor. Then the compositor puts the type into page form according to the principles of composition. Here begins the stereotype process by which a metal cast is made, the final printing device of the operation. A cardboard-like substance called a mat absorbs impressions from the linotype slugs. This becomes the master mold for the final casting. Now the mat is ready for the hydraulic press and the electric dryer, or mat former, which give it a cylindrical shape. Then the curved mat is placed in the stereoplate caster in which the final metal casting is formed. Molten metal is forced into the casting box which translates the impression of the paper mat into a curved plate or casting which will fit the cylinders on the press. A conveyor track transports the casting to the press room. For every standard size page in the newspaper, there is a separate metal casting. For each page in the paper, there is a separate cylinder on the huge Goss presses. In just a matter of minutes now, the exciting roar of the presses will begin to sound. A button is pushed, the presses roll, and another step in our story is completed. The reporter's copy is being transferred from metal to paper again, and at a rate of 51,000 copies per hour. 
Today, the Sheboygan Press net paid circulation totals 27,000, covering six counties. A vast difference from the original subscription list of just 68, more than half a century ago. Where four employees and a primitive press got off the paper in 1907, today there are 117 employees and 40 stringers or correspondents backed by the latest in modern printing equipment. By truck, by mail, and by carrier boys, the daily edition goes out to readers in the city as well as a wide area around Sheboygan. And once again, the story, an idea, finds its way back into the mind of man, having completed the cycle through metal, ink, and paper. The Sheboygan Press has served its purpose. Although a relatively new name in the family of industry in Sheboygan, the Empire Petroleum Company has taken its place in the community and has added to both the company's and the city's wealth. Wisconsin's rapidly expanding highway system created a demand for paving asphalt. Quick to perceive and respond to that demand was the Empire Petroleum Company with headquarters in Denver, Colorado. Taking over the plant facilities of the old Wisconsin Oil Refining Company in 1956, Empire began the production of asphalts by refining heavy crude oils brought in from the West. Sales shot up by the millions of dollars since the short time the asphalt plant has been in production. And they continue to climb month after month. Additional storage tanks were built to provide a 22 million gallon storage capacity, half of it devoted to asphalt. Gasoline, Kerosene and fuel oils are also produced, but they are the byproducts of the principal output, paving asphalt. Laboratory checks are maintained during all phases of production, from the time the asphaltic crude oil arrives by tank car until the finished products leave the plant for distribution. The operation at Empire is basically the same as other refineries whose principal products are gasoline and light oils. That is, the initial refining process follows the pattern of crude topping and vacuum distillation. After the asphalt is extracted, processed, blended, and then stored, heated, it is ready to be loaded into asphalt truck trailers, which transport it to the scene of use. Empire Petroleum Company maintains a fleet of 10 insulated 5,000-gallon tractor trailers, which deliver daily hot asphalt to highway construction projects throughout eastern and northern Wisconsin. New construction, plus a continuing need for resurfacing and improvement of existing highways in Wisconsin, assures a constantly increasing demand on the refinery's output. And in the long-range view of things, Empire's Sheboygan plant is considered to be depression-proof. The assumption is that in the unhappy event of a widespread business recession, the government would take steps to combat it by launching a stepped-up highway construction program. And so long as highways are built or maintained, Empire Petroleum Company's Sheboygan plant will produce the paving asphalt for the job. On this county resurfacing job, hot asphalt is delivered to the construction site in an Empire tractor trailer. There it is mixed with an aggregate which will be transported to the final destination in dump trucks. After that will come the spreading, rolling, and setting. And another Wisconsin highway will have been built, resistant to heavy traffic and cold northern winters. This, then, is the success story of the Empire Petroleum Company, which acquired and converted an existing refinery with operating losses to an up-to-date modern plant, operating now at a profit to its stockholders, its workers, the city of Sheboygan, and the state of Wisconsin. It was Empire's management's experience which perceived that the field of production of the Sheboygan plant was not in competitive high-octane gasolines. Rather, it was the manufacture of a product with a built-in market close by, Wisconsin's highways and the city streets. With renewed vigor and a confident eye to the future, Empire Petroleum Company's Sheboygan plant now refines up to 3,500 barrels of crude oil daily, 365 days of the year. Its design capacity will be able to handle 5,000 barrels of crude daily, and there is no doubt that that capacity will soon be reached. A million dollar refinery adding to Sheboygan's wealth, well-being, and self-sufficiency. And so in this parade of Sheboygan's industry and business, we have seen the secret of our city's economic growth and strength. We have seen why our city is a good place to work, to live, and to raise our families. For with industry has come ample opportunity for employment with high wage scales, which in turn have developed family, cultural, civic, and recreational good things of life. But this is a two-way street. 
Industry itself has the advantage of the traditional senses of fine craftsmanship, integrity, and an attitude of dependability which the Sheboygan people have displayed for generations. This is one of the secret weapons which a Sheboygan industry may have over competitors in other industrial areas. We think Sheboygan is a mighty fine city. We like our friends and neighbors in this community. We like the good life here, our bratwurst fries, our picnics, our beaches, our outdoor life. We are proud of our churches and the essential role of religion in our everyday lives. We will stand up and be counted when we compare our public and parochial schools with any other city in the state, as well as our parks, our hospitals, our streets and homes. And these kids of ours, we think they're stronger and healthier than any other kids in the whole state of Wisconsin. What do you think? Thank you.